So in the previous video, we pulled everything down we needed from Git, and we also pulled in all of our dependencies for the front and the back end. But we left the video with this error. And this error is showing us that we can't write to our storage folder. In particular, it wants to write a logs folder, but it can't do it because it doesn't have the correct permissions. So in this video, let's fix that. So I've seen a whole host of crazy ideas and solutions for this using various groups and different permission changes. We're going to use a built-in Linux authentication system called ACLs. And ACL just basically stands for Access Control List. And this is the most robust way I've found of managing Laravel permissions. Because the framework generates files from uploads and it creates things like logs and caches and so on, over time, permissions can change and get out of sync and it can cause problems in your application. But setting an access control list and setting it as the default will mean when any new folders or files are created, it will create them with the correct permissions. So the first thing we need to do is set the permissions on the current files and folders that are already there and then also set it as a default for the future files and folders that are going to be created. So over on our server, um, we're still logged in as our deploy user here. So depending on which host you're with and which version of Linux you install, there's a chance you might not have the ACL package installed by default. So if you don't have it installed, you just need to run a sudo apt-get install ACL. So to do that, we're going to do a sudo and then we're going to use a program called setfacl. So it's set F ACL. Then we're going to give that a space and we're going to give this a capital R as a flag and that just means recursive. So that means this current folder that we're going to give it and everything inside of that folder as well. And then we also need to give it an M flag for modify. So you want to say we want the user, in our case the server, dub dub data, we want to give it read, write and execute permissions on the folder. So to do that we can just do a U for user and a colon and then dub 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 hyphen data. Then we just give it a colon again and then say we want R, W and X to read, write and execute. And we can also give this for our current user as well, deploy. So if we ever need to jump on the box and modify something, that user will also have permissions on those folders and files. So we can just do a comma at the end here. Then we can just pass in another one. So U for user again. And then obviously we want our current deploy user. And then again, call on permissions. And we're going to give them read, write and execute permissions. And then what folder do we want to do this on? Well, we want to do it on our storage folder. And we're doing the storage here, and that is presuming that you're in the root of your project. So remember, I called mine yourdomain.com under var www.html. But obviously, make sure you're inside your project. And then we can just hit enter on that. And obviously, it'll ask us for our passwords, give the elevator privileges. OK, and now that should be done. And now we can confirm that that is done by doing a get facl and then on the storage folder and this lists out the permissions now for that folder and you can see here our user dubdub data has read write and execute permissions and the user deploy also has read write and execute permissions so that's changed permissions how we wanted it but we also need to set a default so whenever anything's created in the future it'll also retain them permissions like in a previous video a quick shortcut is to just use the up arrow key to bring up the previous command and then obviously press up again, and now we get this command back. Now the only difference here is if we come over to the start of the command, and we come over to our flags here, and we've currently got RM, if we put a D in the middle of that, so we've given it the D flag here to set this as the default, and then everything else remains the same. So we're doing the capital R for recursive, so we want it as the re default on everything inside the storage folder, and then obviously modify with the two users. So them two users will be the default for any other files or folders created. So we just enter on that. So now that we have the correct permissions set up on our folders, and we've set it so future permissions are also set correctly, if we visit our website, we'll still get a 500 error. And this is because we haven't set an application key. And there's a couple of other commands we need to run before the installation is ready for live deployment. So in the next video, let's take a look at fixing these problems.